What is up, my dashing dudes and darling dames? I am the Hans TV, and welcome back to Idiocy Incarnate. It's time for r slash stories about Kevin. Our first post for the day comes from Dorisus, Velociraptors and the IRA. I'm going to tell on myself. I don't know if I count as a Kevin, since I don't try to be antagonistic or anything. I'm just lacking in common sense sometimes, which can make it kind of hard to carry on a conversation with me. So I'll tell about two conversations I tried to have in which I wildly misinterpreted what the other person was saying. The first story happened a little less than 10 years ago, when I was still a college student in my early 20s. I feel the need to preface that I had been deeply traumatized by Jurassic Park as a child before getting into this. Anyway, my stepfather had rescued a baby bird that had fallen from its nest and was in pretty bad shape. My sister called me and asked me if I could ride with her to a bird sanctuary to drop it off. As I climbed into the car, I asked my sister about the sanctuary. It's actually a raptor sanctuary! I physically recoiled. My sister looked at me and the horrified expression on my face, and having known me my entire life and all the stupid stuff I was slash am afraid of, my childhood fears also included Carol Channing due to a very traumatizing Alice in Wonderland TV miniseries and the theme song to The Young and the Restless, because I thought it was a TV show about ghosts. My sister knew immediately what I was thinking and yelled, NOT VELOCIRAPTORS YOU IDIOT! It's kind of heartwarming that she knows exactly what I was thinking, but I still have to listen to the story every year and about how I, a 22 year old woman, still thought dinosaurs existed for a moment. The second story involved my mother and a discussion about my plans and finances, so it was normal enough. She was asking me about my job, how much I was making, and was I able to cover all of my expenses, etc. Then she said, you should look into an IRA. Now, I did mishear the article. I thought she said THE IRA instead of AN IRA, but it was the fact that I didn't question this. I was taken aback by this sudden change in topic, sure, especially since we live in the US and have never visited Ireland, but I decided to go with it. So I said, I didn't think they existed anymore, and didn't they do some bad things? I don't know, I think I would need to do some research before joining. My mother just kind of looked at me. Do you know what an IRA is? She asked me. Uh, yes? My mother aware that I was lying. An independent retirement account. Oh, and that was the end of that conversation. OP, you've been drinking you some dumbass juice on far too many occasions. Get that sorted out. Our next post comes from EJ1352. Kevin aimed a pew pew at our drill sergeant. So we're in our final weeks of my army basic training, and at this point we're doing all the cool stuff. On this particular day, we went to this range called Buddy Team Live Fire. You can look it up to see exactly what it's like, but it's basically when you go and somebody else go through separate lanes and shoot down pop-up targets and throw grenades at the end. The person is maybe 15 to 30 feet away from you, give or take. Each one of you have a drill sergeant literally right beside you to make sure you don't kill yourself or the person in the other lane. And I got paired with a Kevin. We run through the lane smoothly. Kevin still had some rounds left in his rifle, so one of the drill sergeants that went through the lane with us wanted to shoot the pop-up targets at the end of the lane with his rifle. Kevin decided it was a good idea to point the rifle directly at the drill sergeant when handing it to him, which is a no-no. You don't point a rifle at nothing you don't plan to demonetize. I'm a Kevin myself, and knew he messed up badly when I saw that. The drill sergeant yanked the rifle and threw it on the ground. Kevin tried picking it up, and the drill sergeant kicked it before he could grab it. Got in his face and said, I swear to God, if you would have freaking killed me, I would have haunted your ass and my wife would have beat your ass every day. He was a drill sergeant, so his mouth had no filter. He then proceeded to call him a R-word, stupid mother effer, and a freaking idiot. Honestly, that Kevin should be glad that he wasn't tackled to the ground with a gun to his head. Because honestly, I've seen that happen before. Not practicing firearm safety is really, really a danger to other people. Our next post comes from Jaspermont22. Two of my coworkers and I explained to a Kevin that if the website says we don't have the product, we don't. He came into the store to get it anyway. First time poster here and oh boy, do I have some stories from working in retail during the pandemic. I work at a large pet store chain and have had every type of annoying customer. 
We've had looky loos who just want to get out of the house, angry Karens that throw a fit if we can't drop everything to help them, countless thieves who will wait in line out front just to get caught stealing inside, and this guy that I had the displeasure of having to speak to today. Just some background info before we get started. We just started to implement a curbside pickup system through our website to help slow our foot traffic in the store. It hasn't been without its bugs for the employees, but on the customer side, it's pretty straightforward. It gives you the option for curbside pickup when you check out. Also important to note, each item says if it's available at our location or not, and obviously if it's not in our store, you can't come pick it up here, so we'll only give the option to have the items delivered to your house. Final piece of information is that, like I said, it's a large chain, so the website is completely a cooperate deal, and on the store level, we have no control over it. Now, it sounds fairly simple, but apparently not for Kevin. He calls into the store saying the website was only given the option to deliver to his house. Okay, fine, an honest mistake, and really an understandable one. My manager answers and explains that we don't have the product in store. At that point, Kevin gets quite angry and says we shouldn't promise curbside pickup if we don't have it, then hung up. A few minutes later, he called back again. My coworker answers and I heard her explain the exact same thing. He then asks to speak to the manager. My coworker hands the phone off to her. She explains to the guy for a third time that we don't have it in store and even says that a different store might have it, so he should try changing his preferred pickup location. He hangs up again and we forget all about it. About an hour later, he calls back for a third time and this time I was the unlucky one to answer. Kevin asks if we offer curbside delivery in a pretty angry tone. He also has a deep voice, like an older man, so I can kind of understand that he's having issues using technology and is frustrated with it. I say we do, but you have to purchase the items on our website and call when you get here. He says it's only giving him the deliver to house option, and I give him the same spiel my coworkers did. At this point, he goes off. He says something along the lines of, we're trying to kill him by forcing him to come into the store and do something crazy like wait outside in the line to buy what he needs. I repeated that we do not have the items in store, so he should not try to come in. He remains on the line a little longer to scold me for the website, but eventually disconnects, and I thought that would be the end of it. Well, apparently all of our advice fell on deaf ears, because Kevin came into the store anyway. And surprise, he's not an old man at all. He was maybe in his 40s at the most, but definitely within an age range where he should be comfortable using his computer. Kevin tries to walk into the store, past the line of customers we have waiting in line, to get in. My coworker asked him to wait like everyone else, and begrudgingly he did. However, the entire time he was in line, he was pounding on the front window, yelling at the poor customers inside to hurry up. This had the opposite effect though, as many customers inside began to actually take longer out of spite, which held up the entire line. In all, he had to wait about 15 minutes. He came in and went into the back to get what he was looking for. I don't know what exactly he said, but I do know my manager told him again that we don't have the product he was looking for, and that he eventually ended up buying a substitute. I asked a different coworker to ring him up because I could not deal with him after the window banging. I really do hope that's the last I see of him. Maybe next time he'll opt for home delivery, or at least we'll realize we actually do not have the product if our website says we don't. So let's put this in perspective. My father is almost 60 years old. He knows how to use a computer just about as well as I do. This man, who is about 40 according to the story, and is also one of the most entitled people I have ever seen on one of these subreddits, is so computer illiterate that he doesn't realize that not in stock means that it's not in freaking stock. Our final post for the day comes from Copo93. Kevin screwed himself over. This particular Kevin is more of an irate butthole who tends to run off at the mouth. He's also one I'm stuck working with. You see, Kevin is one of those people who complains and moans about just about everything. For context, he's a forklift driver and complains about having to do it, despite the fact that he asked to do it. Kevin thinks everyone is also an idiot, despite the fact that everything he says is straight up ignorant and stupid. He also can't count to save his life either, and gets irate when someone tells him his counts are way off.
Anyway, I've been working my current job for the last three months. I had naturally started as a temp and was getting along with pretty much everyone and was making a good impression on everyone around me. About my third day was when I had my first run-in with Kevin. A fellow co-worker had moved a box of plastic to the end of the aisle and went to find a spot to put it away in. Kevin came barreling down the aisle on his forklift and ran into it. He starts cursing and asking who the F put it there, all the while continually bashing into it with his forklift, over and over. I happened to be right there at that moment and was willing to move it out of the way, if he'd stop bashing it with his forklift. My other co-worker had come back and yanked it out of the way before Kevin completely destroyed it. Kevin looks at me and screams at me, And you, you're just freaking standing there. Like, it's my fault it's there to begin with, and I should have risked getting hurt trying to move it while he's hitting it with a big forklift. I just rolled my eyes and said, whatever you say, dude. After that, I made it a point just to avoid him altogether. I have little patience for stupidity or buttholes, much less for a stupid butthole. Unfortunately, such a person tends to insert themselves into any given situation they see fit. So, it came to pass that last week the company I worked for decided to promote me to full-time and asked me to come in an hour early for orientation. I did so and arrived about 10 minutes early. Kevin was at the door, standing on the steps. I walked past and opened the door to get inside and Kevin, in his usual disgruntled manner, asked what I was doing. Mind you, our company does temperature checks at the door due to the corona panic, just inside the door. I turned around and calmly explained that I was told to be in at that time and I would hail somebody from inside for my temperature check before proceeding to my orientation. Kevin proceeded to go off on a tangent, saying, I don't effing care who you are or why the eff you are here. You wait out here like the effing rest of us. God damn. I'd finally had it, but kept it as mild as I could. Alright, alright, calm down. Jesus. And backed down from the stairs. Someone came to the door shortly after and took Kevin's temp and then mine. I made it on time and kept what happened to myself. Kevin, however, couldn't keep his mouth shut. He was in the break room and running off at the mouth about the incident and happened to do so in front of the HR lady doing my orientation. Kevin apparently told her I was trying to cut him in line. Mind you, he was just standing like he was chilling and trying to bypass getting my temperature checked. So she questioned me about it because when she asked who it was, Kevin said, some freaking temp. So she put two and two together. I explained what had happened and what was said, and she wanted verbatim what Kevin said in my response. I simply told her that given this wasn't the first time, my response wasn't exactly cordial either. I was just trying to get in on time and make sure that I got someone's attention so I could get to my orientation on time as I was told. She was pretty understanding of my response and none too happy about Kevin's, stating it poorly represented a hospitable work environment, especially on my first day as a full-timer. I even told her that I wasn't going to make a big deal about it. She said no need, Kevin did that himself. This isn't the first time Kevin has started something like this with somebody, especially temps. But since temps are usually disregarded on basic principle in regards to complaints against full-timers, they kind of just get pushed to the side. However, I was now a full-time employee, and it brought validity to all those other former complaints. Individually, both HR and my supervisor pulled Kevin into their offices and ripped him a new one. Kevin has been giving me dirty looks for about the last week, like I snitched him out, despite the fact that he couldn't keep his mouth shut. At some point, Kevin walked by me and whispered, Snitch? I just turned around and said, Kevin, I didn't say anything about what happened until they came up and asked me about it because you ran your mouth off about it. You can blame me all you want, but it's your mouth that got you into that mess 100%. So maybe now might be the best time to shut it and turned away and walked. Kevin wisely keeps his mouth shut around me now, but he's not exactly learning that lesson with everyone else because a bunch of people are making complaints about him being that way to them. I don't see Kevin staying there much longer. So, the lesson to be learned here? Don't be that idiot running off at the mouth and quit while you're ahead. And don't be an idiotic butthole. If there are documented examples of him doing this before, and also the thing with the forklift where he was just running it into a box and blaming it on everybody else, even though he could have seen it, how does this guy still have a job? Like, I get he's a full-timer, but Jesus Christ, there's only so much you can do. Well, alright my dashing dudes and darling dames, that is going to do it for today's episode of r slash stories about Kevin. Hope you enjoyed the stories, and if you did, I'll link them down in the description as always. 
And if you liked the video, subscribe, share, drop a like, and a comment down below what you'd like to see me read next. A humongous thank you to everyone who subscribed in the past few months. I cannot thank y'all for what y'all do for the channel and how y'all bring the community together. I cannot thank y'all enough for that, and I can't explain how much it means to me to be the leader of that and to push y'all to be better as well. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.